What up, though, world? This is your man, Jay Lick, and you are back rocking with the culture here. I appreciate everybody tuning in. We were um, gone last week. We had to take a little vacation. I hope everybody had a, a good fourth. Ladies, how y'all doing? Great, good. Good. You sure? Energized. You sure? <laughs> you energized off the, off the juice, Anne? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? Don't do it. <laughs> now you don't do it. You're too energized off the juice. Hey, you know, the juice will do it. So what's good? Y'all good? Y'all all right? You know they don't know what you're talking about, right? Hey, I mean, things happen. They shouldn't. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so we're going we to get right into it. We got uh, some amazing guests yes. in the house tonight. Um, you all know him as the Neighborhood Hope Dealer. So we're going to chop it up with them for a minute, see what they got going on. Um, one of the things that, that drew me to, to Joel was that he's the youngest um, politician in the country. <laughs> no, public service. And uh, I think you started off with 19? 19. 19 wow. on the wow. city council. So let's, uh, let's jump in right there. Jay, tell your story, man. Well, back in the day, well, thanks first for having us on. Of course, the show. of course, of course. Uh, thanks, Dre. I think we came a long way starting in the league. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that's where it all started. Like, in the league. Long, but, uh, you know, no hacks on tail. Right, right. There you go. <laughs> uh, back in the day, though, what was Yeah, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> 2015 um, was the year we had got started. So actually, Jay Beyond, you know, it's actually great that he showed up today. Um, I met him on campus at Union Dearborn, just like, hey, bro, you know, on my campaign. Um, after I did all this other stuff, so we like went to DC um, at the the, culture, the Congressional Black Caucus Conference mm -hmm. um, DC that they have every year in the fall. And I went there, and I was 19. I was fall of 2014. I was in all these youth workshops, all these black and brown cats from all over the country. Um, they were talking about doing all these great things. So I get back home and see opened up on city council. And so I was 19, sophomore in college. I grew up in Angst, but people were like, yo, you should run for that seat. I was like, it would be pretty dope to be on city council. Uh, so I, I made a Facebook post. And I was like, if I get a lot of likes on this Facebook post, like I'll make it official. Got like 200, 300 likes, first time ever. Um, we got hype. That's mm -hmm. what I told you. Like, <laughs> my campaign. You feel a certain type of way. You feel a certain type of way. I was like, okay. And as soon as I told Jay we was running, we just started knocking doors, you know, uh, meeting people, having community cookouts, all kinds of stuff like that. And this has been a history since then. Yeah, so now I got a beer. Fourth month, fourth month. It's a progress. It's about like progress. It's a, a, a love situation, you know, a love hate situation. Right. Trying to grab that beer. Right, right. Steve. Yeah. So yeah. I have a question about something that you just said. So you said when you went to the caucus you were inspired but what inspired you to go to that like did you already know hey i kind of have some interest in this or what what made you even attend that well so i mean so politics was never like the dream job i always wanted to be a spy it was probably telling people <laughs> all the time and so uh, but but since that's what i wanted to do, i was going to networking and stuff so i would, you know, I would always be out networking i used to walk around with business cards uh, and it would say like the Jones experience, or like I came up with different creative business names that were not even real businesses. Oh but I would just Jones? be passing them off to people. And I was just networking like crazy. And I ran to uh, one of the former uh, United States senators, Carl Levin, uh, him and his team. And then they, they just like flew me out there, provided all, you know, lodging and whatever. And I was just floating around with them. And so it was really just based off of just, you know, relationship building. And they took me out to DC and I just had a great time, came back home. And then, what? Oh. <laughs> took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of that takes me back to um, wow. JD, how you say you knocked on yeah. the door yeah. and asked the question like, hey, is... I know you don't sell drugs. <laughs> what, what are you doing? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> and now from him, just like believing in itself, yeah. printing up some cards. I don't know what the Jonas experience That's is, what I'm like. but I'm going to give you this card. And People it, are getting all these kind of like opportunities from just yeah. opening your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Like, you got to do this. Oh, yeah. Telling y'all man how to you get a Gmail, you get a Google number, go crazy. Yeah. Set up a Google number with a Washington DC area code. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I'm telling y'all. Like I know crazy. how it started, but like, okay, if someone else wanted to what yeah. what do you tell them? Like how do they I mean it's, it's I, I, 
Uh, what meeting do you attend? Like, right. who do you get in contact with? What website do you go to? What do you, I don't know, like, what do you do? <laughs> I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, like, since we all have our different journeys, it'll really depend on the individual. But I think the key is really just get, I mean, you gotta make your move before you're ready. Like, with us, like, it was really like, we just always network and always coming up with different things to, to do. And that might've been radical, might've been like disruptive, but it was different, you know? And so as soon as you do something different, that's when you start catching all the different attention. And so we're like, we're young, we're black, we're from Inkster, we said we want to run for office. It wasn't something you just, you just you know, see all the time. It's like all these more seasoned citizens on the city council, right? So it's just like, yeah. now we, we capture the attention, what do we do with it? And so like for anybody that wants to do it, it's kind of just like, you really got to jump out there. And the sooner you start, the easier it'll be. Because you never know what meeting's going to be that meeting that, Put you on the you know, put you on the map, but you gotta be at the you gotta be at all the meetings until it happens. Do know? they do they respect you? Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta make sure they respect you. You know, because I, I was thinking, I was like, you you being so young, it could go one of two ways, right? right? They either like say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, like have a seat, or since times have changed, they, they might like look to fresh you. Fresh ideas. Yeah. Right. I, I think I think it was I think it was push and pull. I mean, I think it was a, a mix of both of that, and I'm sure Javion can speak to this too, because like when we was first campaigning, a lot of people were saying that like, oh, you're too young, you know, mm -hmm. you're too this, too that. Um, but as soon as like they see your work ethic and they see like some of the things you begin to do, um, their tune changes. And, and plus, a lot of people, like I just said, are always looking for those fresh ideas um, and new faces. And so like, we, I mean, we're right there. And so a lot of tables that young people would not be sitting at, we were sitting at, and we have to, you know, basically be the voice of the whole like generation right there. What was your pitch? Like, I know you said, like, okay, I'm running for city council. Like, what came after that? Like, to get them to, like, convince them to vote for you. You know what I mean? Right. Like, Man, I, well, <laughs> I mean, I mean you don't have to, like, go yeah, into, like, pitch mode. I mean, just, right, like, right. give me an idea. Like, Man, I'm trying, what, what, I'm trying to think that was, like, what was your platform? What was you running on? Uh, we ran on yeah. public safety, economic development, mm -hmm. and uh, parks and rec. And so, I mean, I had a whole little, we had a one page that we just passed my day one. That's just memorizing. So that's my whole school. Like, hey. I'm Joel Jones, lifelong resident of City of Inkster. Woo, woo, woo. I said, no. Oh, 19 well, years. <laughs> we were going crazy. You no, know, accessibility and accountability are two of my highest priorities. No. So, I was, like, we, we had it down to a science, man. It's just we'd go out, and you know, if you're a young person, you really just have, you got your message, and you're ready, and you say it, mm -hmm. and you're confident, and people hear you, they like, wow. They're like, impressed. Yeah. 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 Like that person. We hit them with the car. <laughs> for the experience. For the experience. <laughs> Wow. So, so what are some of your duties? Because I think a lot of people hear that and it's like, well, that's going to be a lot of work mm -hmm. once I'm in there. What if I do get it, then what? Right. So what are some of the duties that you're charged with? And so, well, back on city council, um, I mean, it was really just being accountable to like the citizens, uh, passing the budget, collecting property tax, the different uh, business things of the city. Um, now, being a state rep, our, one of our biggest priorities is passing the budget for the state. Uh, so make sure we actually get a balanced budget, which is something we're working on now. I was telling my brother about um, trying to you know, make sure it's funding for stuff in the state, you know, for roads, for different services, for different businesses. Uh, beyond that, I think that's when you really get into the individual um, piece because it's like you can get elected. We got some people that really don't do nothing. They might go and vote and then go home and they just collecting the check. So whenever you get into politics, you really just gotta make it your own. So for us, like, you know, we're, we got our internship programs going, we doing our, our neighborhood meetings, you know, we're going around visiting people, supporting people, supporting local nonprofits, um, going to the schools to talk to the youth to, you know, get this pipeline started. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really not a job description in politics. You kind of just do whatever you think makes sense. You know, you're the elected leader, you're the trustee of the public. And so whatever you think is in the best interest of the people, of course, with their advice, with their that's um, input, good. that's what you do. Yeah, so you can get scary. this job and like, not do anything? That's what I mean. Oh, that's, that's what I'm like, wait. That's good, what? but like, it's yeah. scary. Like, yeah, that's what happened when you elect That's why you got to, once you elect people, you got to hold them accountable. Yeah. If you don't, right. people, yeah. you know, if you right. just elect them and they you just like, okay, go on, you know, go on and do this, they go away and you just be wondering, like, what, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's scale back a little bit. Let's go back to the city council. Mm -hmm. So when you were there, what were some of the, the ups and downs? Highs and lows, just peaks and valleys. Well, I think there uh, on city council, first off, it was part time. So, um, and I was in I was in school at the same time. I wasn't able to like pay for staff. Which I mean, it, I think it really I think that that was like a bad part. We didn't I would say we didn't have funding. I think that was probably the only bad part. But since we didn't have funding, we had to get real creative. And so and we had a very robust volunteer base. 
um, but incentives is important. So, you know, we found different ways to like incentivize people and whatnot. Um, also there, I think on city council, um, which I, what I miss most about it is that, you know, now I got a job so now I see city council and city hall right around the corner from the house. <laughs> and so, you know, it's close, you know, more direct contact with the people. Um, you know, people calling you about the garbage not getting picked up or something, it's something you can solve immediately. You know, or somebody's, you know, asking you, you doing police brutality kind of, you know, cases, all different things like that. Um, but what I love most about city council is that, you know, we're getting ready to be put in emergency management, the city thinks it was. And so a lot of other cities are in emergency management. It's kind of just like when the city council and the mayor lose control of the city. Um, and we had end up doing a nice um, financial plan, got up out of that. Um, consent agreement, so we, we basically saved the city. We back, you know, running our own show right now. We changed the form of government uh, from having a city manager there to actually having a mayor council, which means that um, the people we elect are the ones who's actually serving us. Because a lot of times in these smaller cities, they have our city managers, and they come in. They're, they're basically like the private folk mm -hmm. who come in. They just handling business, and nobody really knows who they like are. Yeah, exactly. They don't really care. Right. We elect the mayor and the council. We get mad at the mayor and council when the person making the decisions, you know, off in their office in the back room somewhere. And so, oh, so wait. So what you're saying is that when there's the you will have some cities that have a mayor and a council, but still have a, a manager. Right. Right. So what what would be the point of the mayor and council? Just a, a bigger the face. The face. Okay, yeah. I mean, they they vote they vote on different. Okay. Right, they're, they're the elected body there, but the day-to-day -day operation, operations of the city will be um, done by the city manager. Okay. And so that's what we changed, so now the mayor does that in the city commission now. So now we have a bit more accountability saying, you know, what this is the person you put in the office, this is the person that's going to be making these decisions that affect you. It's not going to be somebody that you never met, that you never, you know, that right. doesn't really care about you, that they still don't get paid, they ain't got to worry about getting elected, they don't have to worry about mm -hmm. um, coming out to hear from you. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, I was really excited mm -hmm. about that. So I'm gonna pause there and let's jump to DeAndre. What's man? What's up, man? <laughs> What's going on? Tell us your story. Ooh, my story. Where I start at? Twenty-two. How did you get here? How did you, well, let's, what got you on this road? I wasn't supposed to be on this road. Honestly. Okay. So tell, tell us. Give, give us a, a, so, a simple explanation of that. Stuff that I really wanted wasn't planned out. Mm -hmm. um, one of my life, um, I originally wanted to go join the Marine Corps. That okay. was my big thing for out of high school. I just wanted to go to the yeah, military. Exactly. Wanted to go to the military. Wanted to travel, active duty, no kids, no wife. I'm about to live it up. Y'all here? Come on, come on. Be frugal. No, please. That's <laughs> what. <laughs> <Be frugal. laughs> <laughs> Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Why, why are you like that? <laughs> 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 that is not what he meant. No, I can't mean, see the world. You know, we <laughs> 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 disagree. I mean, you finish, finish <laughs> telling us. So, um, <laughs> I wanted to do that, but I couldn't pass the um, pass the um, basic entry test for the military to ASVAB. I was struggling with the math portion of it. Man. I took like over the course of the three years to get maybe ten times. Oh, wow. Couldn't get it. I'm like, you know what? All right, I'm just going to school. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just go to school. Yeah, you know, take some sorry. take some math classes, get some tutors while I'm in school. Take um, free algebra. You wanted that bad. Yeah, I, I really did. I really did. So I'm like, you know what? The kept failing. Well, the last time I took it, I was 1.0 away from the um, qualifying score. Oh. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's not what God really wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. So, but my heart was always filled with our military and our veterans. So that's how I ended up running into Sharon. Mm -hmm. Um, at it was a Democratic dinner that we had. I forgot what year the election was that we had. We was in that mall downtown. So we met everybody. So I messed around there. 2016. Yeah, 2016. So I messed around and I was his first um, civilian volunteer mm -hmm. on his um, organization. I helped him with his clothing drive that he did for the, 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 did for the veteran, uh, veteran community. I was the first person helping with that. Going forward, I just up in all types of community started like, you know what, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here. Just meet like people said, networking people and meet different people and just mm -hmm. take it wherever God take you. Just, I like left the military alone, but still serve my veterans and our military at the same time, but not actually in uniform. Mm -hmm. So that's what still give me satisfaction to this day, I'm still serving, but not actually in the uniform. Mm -hmm. And, and, so, and now, an area that needs it, exactly. too. Like, so I learned a lot with Deron with Best for Vets because I didn't know that veterans get multiple checks. I thought it was just one check, but it's really a lot of checks that veterans get yeah. that the VA do not supply them or mm -hmm. they don't mark them at the qualifying um, disability level. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Some of them really get disability, like back broke, everything, but only like 3%, 30% disability. Mm-hmm. But so, so they can get like up to 100% on their money, but yes. they don't because they don't yes. want to qualify for the program. Not qualify, I wouldn't say qualify, but the VA don't do the paperwork. Or Certify. Anything. Exactly. Okay. So that's what Starine and Best for Vets do. They help veterans get the appropriate um, percentages for the disability and help them get the qualifying money and the mm-hmm. housing that they need. Yeah. Um, get around Starine just learned a lot. So going forward, you know, graduating college, um, Wayne County Community College a couple weeks ago. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> so I just stuck with the school. You know what? You know, fall semester now, I look pretty cool. Thanks for that. You know, like, it's not that hard. Yeah. You know, just what? keep going. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Year will pass. Okay. Do this last year. So man, I'm tra- transferring now to U of M Dearborn okay. to continue my bachelor's in computer science. Um, I have my own computer and um, technology business where I develop websites for different businesses or personal websites, whatever you might need. I can create those for people. I'm just out here on the ball. So, oh, <laughs> I will say one, two, three, shoot. No. <laughs> Um, well, before we move on to your next venture, because I do have a question of how you switched, or uh-huh. not switched, but how you got yeah. to that, but was there anything early on that brought about your passion for veterans or for military service, because you said that was just something you knew you wanted to okay. do? Well, that's a good question. So, I'm, my family is military oriented. My grandpa was in wow. World War II. My uncle, um, he served in the Army as well. He left my commission, but he retired as a major in the Army. Mm-hmm. So he works now in now DC still work for the government still. So being around those military spirits and going to military school, my eleventh grade year, like staying on campus and like all military structure. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. What military school? What military school did you? Um, How Military Academy and How Indiana. They recently just closed this year. Oh, okay. Closed down. But that school been open since like eighteen something. Oh. Yeah, it's like in the middle of nowhere. Wow. <laughs> kids, the kids used to run away all the time and go in the cornfield. I'm like, where y'all going? But since I said that, I'll be honest. I went a wall too. I'm not even gonna lie. So we, we went to the cornfield too. No, no, no. Look, see, I'm, I'm smart with mine. So <laughs> we either plan a field trip coming to Detroit to the Henry Ford Museum. You know, I'm like, all right, no, I'm call my man. Let's go grab me from the museum. Oh. Uh, out the back door. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good solid yeah. plan. Yeah, I say. Cause we used to get allowance. Our parents just send us money to our um, TO. That's a um, technical officer for our, like a door manager. Mm-hmm. He'd hand us out our allowance every Friday. I'm in my room saving up like bankrolls of money. That's <laughs> <plan. laughs> <laughs> but the greatest thing. Uh, right. <laughs> right. He's over here like the Italian job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get out. Give me a little plug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, so, I'm not doing this no more. I saved up enough to get my man some gas when he came and grabbed. So, wow. So I was the first person to have a successful eight wall from military school. <laughs> <laughs> strategy, you got it. Till now, I'm like, yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, I, I went back. Oh, okay. And when I went back, it was so crazy. They still, the, the whole staff and the whole organization, the school still showed me love like I didn't do nothing. Like, they really, like, they really loved they me. They had to respect there. it. Yeah, like, you know what? You know, we still could run track. No. Okay. But I still had, like, we call it Conda where we had to, like, march around our um, campus with the rifles and stuff. I did that, like, I had 30 hours I had to do, but. Nothing. Knocked it down, like, whatever. Mm. But <laughs> I still ran track, so I was cool. Mm-hmm. And coming back home, doing, I graduated from Thurston High School. The whole structure was weird, and oh. I didn't like it. Like, you it's not oriented, because for military school, we had, like, a set step, because we were at 6 a.m. PT, then we go to lunch, to class, our sports, then we do formation and something later on. So I'm going to school Thursday, going to class, going home. I'm supposed to be doing something right now, but yeah. it was the best of both worlds. But you know, I, I won't say a troublemaker, but while I was in military school, it was like mm. in the past. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> behind it's you. All, in the past. all right, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, my question was, how do because you two work together right. now, right? right? So, tell everybody like oh, what you guys so. are doing specifically. <laughs> 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 Tell us your story. Oh, yeah. Surprise, welcome. I was here for moral support for the for the opportunity. Uh, so he kind of started it off um, 2006, what, 2013. I had transferred to University of Michigan, Dearborn, from Morehouse College. Okay. Uh, during my time mm-hmm. on the University of Michigan, Dearborn's campus, it wasn't really no black. <laughs> around, for real. Like, big difference all, from where yeah, you came from. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that was like my first experience just being at a predominantly white school. So 
we instantly connected mm-hmm. just like soon as I seen her, I'm like, what up, Yo, you was like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, what up, though? Right. <laughs> and and uh, we, we was dressing up, too. So, yeah. like, we was the only kids on campus with shirt and tie on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to cut the J off, but yeah, yeah, back, back when you said, um, that's how military was. There's only five black people. Uh, oh, oh. The whole battalion is all, you know, mm-hmm. predominantly white. So, <laughs> <laughs> my best friend. Yeah. So, I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up making some great friends. Like, my best friend, he from Chicago. Um, mm-hmm. He from, well, he, he's in the Marines now. Mm-hmm. My other friend, he from Cleveland. So, we all from inner city. So, we all, you know, coming together. Like, we still talk to each other to this day. Nice. Yeah, you feel me? Like, we all just inner city kids from the hood, mm-hmm. here for the same reason, mm-hmm. yeah. playing same sports. Yeah. We, we bunk with each other, so it's like, not bunk, I don't even bunk, we in prison. <laughs> 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 we was roommates. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I definitely understand that. When you see, like, oh, you know, it's a brother over there. What up, though? Yeah, me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> especially, like, being from, like, Chicago, like, Detroit, Chicago, they, like, mm-hmm. pretty much the same mm-hmm. stuff, so linked up and being friends ever since. Nice. So you met Will and yeah, and that was all here tutored and booted? Yeah, and uh, we were just um, brainstorming on things we could do. Like just, we had to go grab lunch or something. Uh, and we just think, uh, man, we sick of school. How can we get this ASAP? <laughs> That was the original idea. Uh, so when he did go to uh, the Congressional uh, Caucus, he came back and he told me about his experience or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay. I worked at Morehouse. We had uh, took a bus to Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. This was random. I, I wasn't really messing with politics or whatever. I messed with Obama for sure. Okay. And, I, and I couldn't vote at the time. I was like 17. But um. We were just out knocking doors for him, and I was like, dang, I'm making an impact out here in yeah. Jacksonville. I'm from yeah. Detroit. So, uh, so when he came back and he was like, yes, he just opened the ink shop thinking about running. I was like, wow, shoot, that's something different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's real different, yeah. actually. And so uh, he was like, yeah, you're going to be running my campaign. I was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 that's a little different, too. But you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, good with, I'm good with people. I'm good with networking. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, we, we got young faces. Uh, we can definitely make this happen. So. He already known it, Easter. He didn't live there all his life. So it was like, all right, this is going to be a nice little cake. Well, he is free. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, good W's. We competitive young black men. We like winning. Uh, and so that's just how it took off. Once we got that first one, it's like, dang, blood in the water. We, yeah. <laughs> we want some more. So right. uh, we just kept it moving. Uh, he, when he got nominated for a state representative, that was within, a, that was like during his first year of being on city council. That's so amazing. Dang, I know. I like this <laughs> <laughs> so state rep is a nomination. Well, well, no, well, you get elected, but yeah, um, I mean, so still, like someone nominates you for no, no, it, we oh, had no, we had a different special, situation. Special yeah, and, uh, yeah. the state rep. So the and, and rest in peace uh, to Julie Kowalski. She was our former state representative. She had passed on like a it was like a sudden. She had a sudden heart yeah. attack um, down in Oregon while she was hiking um, oh, wow. with her family. Yeah. So I was down south um, at Fort Knox doing my summer training. Javion was here, uh, so he went through like all the selection process and nominating committees, the panels and whatnot. And so the precinct delegates in the community ended up choosing us out of like 11 other candidates to run. So that's how I got the nomination. So it was like a random, it's like a situation that never happened. It oh. just happened. Cause she, when she, when she had passed away, she was already, the, the election was coming up. Her name was already on the ballot. She's the only Democrat. So oh. they have to have a Democratic nominee to replace her. So. The Democratic Party has to do like this nomination process, and that's how we had came off, uh, came off the first nominated Republican. That is crazy. Yeah, it was like real crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you down here, you go left, right, oh, on. Right. And you get a call, you get a call like, hey, so um, and I didn't even get a call. When you come back, <laughs> you didn't even get a call. Nah, yeah, I, I got back here doing like, stuff. Yeah, I gotta do what? <laughs> <laughs> when I got off the field, I seen my phone was just blowing up, and I had I called the mayor back, and he was the first person that told me like, yo. You know, Julie had passed away, and then they just told me like they was doing stuff. Everything was in motion. As soon as I get back home, like you running for state rep. Like, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So we had some consecutive races. Yeah. We we damn near had an election every year. Right. So far. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's been a process, but um, after he got elected a state representative, of course he made me chief of staff. Uh, we can pay people. This is crazy. Yeah. So I. I 
my first trip to the Capitol ever in life. <laughs> FYI, real quick, tell everybody how old you guys are, please, because they I'm don't know. I'm 24 years old. That's, I'm and 24. How, Twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> that, that right there is what they get like. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Yeah, so I did that oh, wow. for a few years. I actually just retired. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. What? I just retired from my service with the state of Michigan. I love the state of Michigan, and I still serve the state of Michigan, but just in a different capacity now. Okay, yeah. so spoken like, right, right, spoke <laughs> like a true, right? Spoken like a true man of service. You know. So, what are you doing now? Uh, so recently, I uh, just created the Neighborhood Hope Builders Incorporated, a mm -hmm. nonprofit serving the people. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be serving as an executive director there. Uh, also, I I have a a team, uh, CMJ Connections. We do uh, young millennial like networking events uh, throughout the Metro Detroit area, where we pick like certain areas in the city that don't necessarily get tapped into. But uh, we bring young people from different professional fields and backgrounds that just came back home or are trying to learn the area and they mm -hmm. bring together for drinks and networking and different networking activities. We do all kinds of stuff. We have Black History Month event. We just had our third brunch, brunch at Mario's where we have a brunch in the backyard on Seven Mile. Yeah. And it's real nice, it's tense. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's elegant though, it ain't like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so, uh, we don't do parties, we do events, that's our thing. But, um, yeah, I still gotta bring my thing. <laughs> oh no, you can't have it in the Just park. Check that out. No, I don't know, you feel me, but it's, it's part of it's part what, of what? Seven what? Oh, 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 all right so now that we know how you all kind of started to bump into each other so how did all this come together I don't even know for real. Actually, <laughs> or what are you guys doing? I know you guys work in Lansing together, right? Yes. So what are you guys doing in Lansing, and why do you left Lansing to go to UNL? Uh, I went to state. Um, <laughs> 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 no, no, no. I'm not even gonna lie. I might end up doing some course at MSU. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I got um, lost. We're gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> How are y'all working together? In Lansing, what are so, you doing in Lansing together? Well, when Jay was working, um, I went in as an intern office still. I mm -hmm. left one of my jobs in Troy. I'm like, you know what? This is boring. I'm behind a computer all day and not really doing nothing impactful like I felt like. Um, if we, they had one intern, they said that she was leaving or something like that. I'm like, you know what? It opened up for you. So you wanted it. You want it. I'm like, oh, I'll take it. And they me out for a little bit, you know, after we suddenly retired, <laughs> just left me up here now, all lonely, but what are you doing up here, I can't really tell. You serve me, I guess. <laughs> this is all bad, y'all. This is all bad. You got right? You got the wrong guy to step in? Tag me. Tag me. Okay, so okay. I'm going to say this. I just do what I'm told to do. I'm going to say that. Oh, okay. I'm going to do that and make phone calls. And That's what I do. That's, he's still right in the You on the ground so, working. Yeah, so okay. I just do whatever I'm told he, he to do. Sold, he is sold. He got his ideas, too. Yeah, it's a... Yeah. Uh, Right now, you do kind of have a point though. Right now, we uh, since we're working on the budget right now, we really haven't been doing much. You know, we're on technically on a legislative recess. Um, so when we go out to the office now, we're doing a lot of the side projects in the office, um, the more community um, oriented. So like uh, Jay Beyond, like you say, he just retired, but the other three folks we have uh, working with us, like um, DeAndre, um, Daquan Harrison, um, who's somebody on the team, but he's in IPC doing a panel tonight. Carl Stafford, who's a student at Michigan State. They are all senior associates of this um, thing we just started called the Hope Institute, which actually falls under the nonprofit Davion's running. Um, and so we, I mean, that's one project we're working on, um, basically starting a, we want to have like a super intern program, like just a way where you might start off as an intern, but by the time you're done and you graduate the program, you become like a consultant, you can start contracting different people, you connect with different employers, um, and just basically learn a myriad of different issues. Um, then we also have um, the league, which some of us at the table are a part of, that we, um, they're also working on. <clears throat> That's really just, you know, if you know, you know. Yeah, it's it's a formless, unofficial organization where we just about to 
um, and really do some great things that I, you know, I believe. And it's going to be um, some people who've been needing to do some great things. And we're coming together to do some great things. Uh, some some real pillars of the community. So I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but I mean, besides that, you know, we just trying to get more youth involved in the process. Yeah. Succession planning is important. Um, so after Davion left, that opened up a position in the office for me to hire somebody from Inkster who's actually on city council. You know, I, I got a term left in the House of Representatives, and so we need to be looking at this you is know, crazy. succession <laughs> planning is so real right now. I think we've been doing a poor job as you know as a people in a lot of places. When we get in positions, we we've been, we ain't really passing. pulling our people up. Yeah, them. and so mm -hmm. um, that's really what we're just trying to do now: get more people involved in the process, uh, teach them they can be there. Let me ask you a question. How many black people are in the Capitol? In the Capitol? Probably half. Uh, elected elected wise, it's probably got a, you know, just under 20 maybe. Like in the House of uh, House of House of Representatives and the Senate combined. And so just to give y'all an uh, idea of the situation, it's 110 state reps, 38 state senators, the governor and the lieutenant governor. So that's 150 people total. So we got about 20 black folk. Well plus the lieutenant governor, regardless of black too. And so about, you know, I say like right under 20 probably black elected officials, but staff wise. So just over 10%, right? That's some. Yeah, but I mean, we got some black staff too, but it's just not, it's not definitely not where it needs to be though. Mm -hmm. um, but we have, we have a handful of black staff, um, and black lobbyists, uh, but yeah, we ain't, in terms of looking at the state of Michigan, mm -hmm. you know, we ain't. Not representing so, where we want to be at. Right. So mm -hmm. overall, um, Aside from doing things like this, what are some things you guys are doing to get the word out and to inform people, hey, you know, you come out and apply for this or even just participate in this? Yeah, I think social, I think social media is important. I mean, that's important. Going out to meet people where they are, you know, going to the schools, going to the churches, um, talking to people. But even like uh, Jay John talked about with uh, some of his side, uh, his side businesses, like seems they like doing brunches and, and different different ways to capture people's attention and then that's when you drop the business right. stuff on them. So you might say right. like, you know, let's go hang out, let's kick it, come to this event. And while we're there, maybe you bring like a special guest out and they can talk about like the importance of voting. So people are like, mm -hmm. yo, that's, that's peasy. Talk about the importance of getting out the vote. You know, that's solid, you know, and, and, or, you know, and from anybody and just um, really trying to leverage people's positions in that way so we can uh, capture the capture attention to figure out how do we sustain it. You know, that's really what we do. Meet people where they at, setting mm -hmm. up different you know ways of showing we here and we need to be here too. We need more people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming you're following like the upcoming election stuff a no. little bit, or I, I think a little. I think uh, <laughs> I mean we can't we. It's we, early. Yeah. It is a lot of people. Twenty of them. Like, yeah. who's, and who's they, they coming to Detroit who too. Who sticks out to you? And they coming to Detroit sticks too. Sticks out, stands out. Maybe on the very, very first. Um, that's an excellent question. You know, like like she said, like I think it's I think it's still pretty early, and I think that it's a lot of people have different things. I, I think if, if you just ask me who sticks out, of course, you know, mm -hmm. people are talking about um, Bernie, people are talking about Biden, people are talking about Kamala, people are talking about or used to be talking about Corey. It seems kind of like he's starting to fade. You know, yeah. people are talking about Pete from. Uh, South Bend or whatever he's starting to fade, and so we're look, we're beginning to see like this all these folk that's in the running, and now it's dwindling down. Yeah. But still, at the end of the day, I'm concerned that you know, which which happens all the time. We have all these people in the race. Mm -hmm. Everyone picks their side. Yeah. We get through the the primary. We pick a candidate. Then everyone's feeling all mm -hmm. emotional because that candidate didn't get chosen. Oh my so God! Exactly what happened last time? I ain't gonna vote. I said this like not in the race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like get out of your feelings. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's exactly what happened. Like, that was crazy too. I, mm. Yeah, that we had elections. We had elections. Yeah. yeah, we went to sleep. Well, no, nah, we didn't go to sleep at elections. We gradually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we just because we already knew it was yeah. up. We already, yeah. knew, we already knew Donald was about to win. I I was trying to hold on like yeah. so Then I woke up that morning. And it was just quiet at work. I work with like a ton of white people, but you could tell they were upset too. Right. Like right. Yeah. it was just quiet. It like I, I didn't. I didn't understand what happened. <laughs> It don't yeah. even matter though. It doesn't it's anymore, just, but politics is local. You know, it's, it's so much that we yeah. can do at, at our local levels if we yeah. learn how to yeah. really come together and do stuff. Mm -hmm. That you know, if it's something going on up top, like you know, he can be saying some crazy stuff, and we can figure out. What to so, do like some of the decisions he makes or they make, is it impacting 
Like, oh, with, yeah, with like, what? like what? For example, like what are some of the decisions that they're making? How is it impacting like cities around Michigan? Because well, people don't get people don't get the connection. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I, I think I think at the end of the day, everything I would say everything affects whatever from from the top down. It all trickles down. But yeah. once you hit the state level, once you hit the local level, um, because of like separation of powers and duties and stuff, things of that nature. You know, people have local control, people have state control. And so mm -hmm. if the state allows, you know, what right. the president or Congress or what, you know, the Senate says to regulate their state or, and I, and I think a prime example is, uh, is marijuana, right? So it's illegal mm -hmm. nationally, but a lot of states allow marijuana. Yeah. And so now we're getting to this whole gray area where, it's, you know, people think it's recreational. We can we can just go out and do whatever. <laughs> and and in a certain you know, state, you'll go to jail. Exactly, right. you go to jail, right. you get locked up, you know, mm -hmm. people think that you can do all kinds of stuff, and it's, it's all Still ambiguous. Get fired. And I think that's the problem <laughs> with, like how you were just saying, a lot of people just don't know it, does this stuff really affect me, or, or does it not? Because mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're trying to do, because it's just so hard. The, edu the, the voter education thing is just so hard, because right. like, how do you get this information? Yeah. It's 10 million, 10 million people in Michigan. How do you get everybody that this, yeah. the same ed um, education, get all of them the same information that you got, and for them to understand it and know how it affects them, it's just. Yeah. I do think a lot more people are paying attention now after mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. So this yeah, has at least, yeah, that at least, that's one yeah. positive that came from it is yeah. people are that's paying attention to local elections, mm -hmm. state elections, things like that, because they're like, okay, I don't want to deal with what's going on on a national right. level. What can I control in my own area? Right. And so that's one positive that came. I wouldn't say that I don't pay attention to the federal level. I do when it comes to presidential, but I feel like our state and our local are more important that kind of do affect our daily life because we are mm -hmm. state and local cities yeah. that affects us daily. Federal, it does, but what's not in the federal give to the state red powers and what they right. want to do. Yeah. So, it's checks and balances. Exactly. It's supposed to be, but yeah. Right, right. So yeah. I think that the, the real fighting is within our states, honestly. Mm -hmm. cause that's what it is. Federal, they have power, but not as much as a daily change that we do in our own city and states. So I think I pay attention to more of the state and local public relations, but keeping my ear for the federal stuff, but yeah. not too much. I, honestly, I go to sleep on elections. I vote and <laughs> I go to sleep. Well, like, yeah, you don't have no control. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, I wake up. Like Trump, what, man? Yeah, like, <laughs> see the Trump one, I woke it's up, like, now. it's a whole new world. <laughs> as soon as I woke up the next day for Trump one, yeah, it's a whole new world. The sky all gray. Yeah. <laughs> I got to gray. stay up all it night was. and watch that live because I was at I work. I try, but then I'm like, usually however it turns out at the beginning is what it ends up looking like towards the end. So I'm like, okay, when they say it ain't looking good, I'm like, Aaron, don't do it. Like, yeah. it's not happening. It's, it's more so, I think that the, um, about the name of that quick. Oh, the electoral colleges. I think that yeah. just needs to be gone with because oh, what, what's, what's, yeah, the, what's the point uh, with it? If we're voting, the electoral colleges decides who wins yeah. and what's the point of our votes. Yeah. So, because Hillary, she won. Honestly, she right. won. The popular. Yeah, vote. she won. But the electoral colleges, they. You know, I had a conversation with a friend about that. Right. So, the electoral college is based on the population of the state. The state. state. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Do all three of you feel like that should be done with and they should just strictly go on a popular vote? Or do you think that based on the size of the state, because keep in mind, right, like I had to tell my friend this, like who who didn't vote, I, that's a whole nother story. But I had to tell, you know, tell him like, you have to keep in mind who you're voting for. Like everybody doesn't get the chance to vote. If you have a, a felony, you can't, you can't vote. Like you will like, right? You have to think about like the people in those neighborhoods or where they came from, what's happening to them. You don't have a um, an ID, you can't vote. You know what I mean? Like just certain things will keep people from voting and who are the people who usually get kept from, vote, from voting, right? right? People of color, right? So in that case, I think the electoral college might help, but. Yeah, it was really supposed to help like the smaller states mm -hmm. that didn't get get uh, as much say as yeah, well. right, right. As but you guys still state. think it should be done away with i think it should just just be majority rules as a whole mm -hmm. yeah like on a national level yeah. Yeah. one person one person yeah, it's yeah. Kind of state the, by state it's kind of yeah. like the um, gerrymandering situation mm -hmm. where um, how the districts are drawn up within our state mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so it's mm -hmm. kind of like that as well yeah. so i do believe that electoral college do need to be gone with mm -hmm. you know it don't help us at all before we go, let me just switch gears a little bit. Um, I know you all see a lot of the police stuff mm -hmm. on, online, how uh, 
it's just deplorable. Like, it's just crazy. I want to see something locally and, you know, where we can start educating, especially younger people, how to respond mm -hmm. to the police. Because it's a lot of things, especially about traffic law, that yeah. they don't know mm -hmm. they have the right to say, don't say, do, don't do, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to see something like that because, you know, they get into a lot of situations and they start digging a hole for themselves where they could have just been like, you know, somebody said like, see a supervisor or something like you can, certain things that you can ask for, you have the right to do, right. they yeah. just don't know. Or how you ask. This one, this one right here. This one. Yeah. So, yeah, anybody wants to touch? I think it's like how, how you ask or how you say to the officer, don't make it like a hostile situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To where, um, I've been pulled over a few times, maybe recently, actually. Uh, I was cool, calm, and collect. I'm not going to lie to, on the uh, podcast. You know, I, just, I gave my license and my state ID, my work badge. Like, you of know, course. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> you be a fool not to. I don't know. Well, he didn't move too fast either. Yeah, I'm assuming, like, that's sad. No, no I, I don't know why with me, my kind of police officer, I don't know why it's not how we see on TV or yeah. Because let's, let's, let's just say this. It ain't bad. They're like, not all, yeah, all police yeah. officers <laughs> aren't, aren't bad. You know what I'm saying? Let's just not. No, of course, uh, no. Of course not. Yeah, of course but not. but just the just getting pulled over, like you can't tell me your heart ain't racing because you don't know what's about to happen. Right. And what's crazy yeah. is when I get pulled over by a black officer, it's worse when I get pulled over. Way by worse. Yeah, and I'm like, hey, you tripping? Right. Like, yeah. Young black officers, really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like they got they smell themselves. Like, oh, mm -hmm. what, what mm -hmm. you got going? I know you got the weed in the car. Yeah, yeah. it's that power. Yeah. Yeah, something to prove. It's that power bar they begin like. So that you know that's something. That's something I want to What did you just say? Man, that's not <laughs> So that is something I would want to see. And if, you know, that's something you right. can put together and maybe start against or whatever and kind of trickle it out across the, the different uh, cities or whatever. Case. My whole thing, though, and with, with DVD, I feel as DVD should hire our black men in the city first before we they read. apply. Yeah, you, they somebody else said that because I'm, I'm yeah, that. they're not yeah. too. But yeah. why hire somebody with Bloomfield? They were not applying because they don't care about you. They don't. They they, they right. stuff up in the hood and go back to the yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But no one's applying. Yeah, like I, I've actually I know a couple of cops and whatever, and and like the the employment like they're not applying. One because they're highly Detroit is the one of the lowest paid right mm -hmm. police department mm -hmm. in the state. So they make like thirty six coming in. You can make that at McDonald's. And I'm putting my life on the line. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, no, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to pay more than that. Yeah, you, can make, you can make 36 at McDonald's, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. And I'm putting my life on the line every day. And then the bad part about it is that they say DPD has the best uh, training academy in the country. Well, one of the best in the country. Mm -hmm. So you, and then everybody comes here, they get training, they stay for a year, and then they book. They book and get paid top dollar. Right. I know a lot of um. I know one guy, he's a Southfield police officer now, but he said, yeah, he did one year of DPD and just went to yeah. Southfield. Yeah. And, just and got paid top dollars. Exactly. Because I was actually listening to law enforcement. Like, I was looking at some different levels or whatever. And, like, I was staying in uh, Taylor. And Taylor got, like, 45 starting off. Mm -hmm. And then, like, state troopers, they make 50 starting off. You know what I'm saying? Of course, it's a different different rank, different mm -hmm. level, whatever the case may be. But DPD, like, Detroit is the major city. Like, it's not the capital, but it's the next thing to the capital of the, of the state. So why wouldn't you want to employ the best of the best? And if you give an incentive, right. like you said, you have to you have to incentivize people. Give me something. To I feel that way about teachers. Oh, mm -hmm. well, then people people who have people right who here. have the most impact get paid the least. Yeah. That and that's backwards. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So I'm not sure if it's a funding issue with it or as far as maybe mm -hmm. I'm not I sure. Because I know if you, want, if you want to go from the top now, they getting it. If you want to start it like. You know the chief, right? Like, come down. They're getting what they're supposed to get. So that's they, like any major corporate. That's pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, so they're getting it. So it's just you know, the actual know, workers get paid these. So that if you know, that's something you all can you know kind of look into. I would I would love because I think it would go a, lot, a long way. Yeah. Especially with the youth and how they be um, live with them on the live. True. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Yeah, and if they're hearing it from people who look like them and who are close to their age, that makes a difference too because. A lot of times you see this stuff on the internet and all it does is enrage you. I mean, it enrages all of us, but it makes you want to be combative or even on a subconscious level, like, oh, if they say something to me, like. Uh -huh. it, it charges you up. Yeah, but yeah. if you're hearing 
what to do or how to remain calm from someone who who looks like me, who you know is close to my age, I'm more likely to take you serious than an adult who I feel like can't relate to me at all. And also those young fellows who are in uniform as well already, that can also help to talk to them. Yeah. Talk to them, like yeah. seeing that, um, like, well, he's an officer himself, so mm -hmm. seeing someone like that and talking to them, like the younger kids understand the procedures and don't panic this and that and the third, mm -hmm. it, it can help it go a long way to see it get more comfortable. I, I do believe that police, people, we shouldn't fear them. But right, you're not, you're not supposed, supposed, supposed to be to. the ones you run right. to for safety, right? right? Not the so, other way around. So it's like, y'all turn into the enemy, unfortunately. Yeah. That's just what mm -hmm. they are, black or white, unfortunately. But yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> they all were quiet. Like, uh. I, already, I already know, you know. And it's crazy, too, because like, even like Jason, I used to like ID, you know. I got all these different credentials and stuff. And I still, you know, when, when, I, when I get pulled over, you know, and I get pulled over, maybe like incidentally or something like that. Maybe want to search the search the car, and they, you know, say, hey, I mean, maybe having all kind of reasons. But I think like, even like in our office now, we work on something called the uh, Community uh, Community Police and Safety Act, and so it's basically a way to start getting police to go into the schools early and with other community leaders and community mentors so we can start you know, building relationships early on so we don't run into different issues that we see going on right now. So I'm, you know, I'm definitely on social media, I'll be seeing people. Right. Yeah, and and every day. To the beat cop. Every day. Like, they yeah. walk the neighborhood, you yeah. know the cop, you know what I'm saying, like certain people, so it's a familiar face. Mm -hmm. So if I'm riding in my area and I, I'm doing something, I, I run a light or whatever, I run right. a stop sign and I get pulled over, it's Officer Jones. You know, right. Officer Jones, gonna look, he know I, I'm in school. He know I'm not out here, you know, mm -hmm. going crazy. If I get a ticket, fine, but Officer Jones ain't going to try to kill me. Right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and we, did, and we did that on Institute. We started a, a community relations department. So, you know, we had, had them doing all kinds of stuff, working with the Boy Scouts, working with the football programs, working with, you know, different organizations just to show the police in a different light and to show that the police actually give back. And, I, you know, I'll be out there myself, you know, and, and like, Jay, you know, you know I, I, I know a lot of people out there in the town or wherever we're going. So we just had the, our annual Insta Music Fest out there, you know, every year, same spot. I guess be scrapped. Same spot every year since I was little. You know, I'm like, I don't know what it is. Like, how did, I didn't know exactly the air, what right it right here. Is. You know, right here. And it's like, and this year, it was like, it popped off so quick. I'm, I'm eating ice cream. I'm, I'm playing two roles at, at the same time. And I'm still out here politicking or whatever, but I'm sitting here with some ice cream, talking to these senior citizens. Like, they fight, they fight. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, dang. So, you know, put the ice cream down, run over there. And it's like, these guys was like getting ready to buck up with, you know, after the cops pulled them off the fight, they're trying to buck up with the cops. Uh, and, you know, it happened a lot of times when you be out. But it's like, it'd be people, you'd be like, these are like the young cats, you know, like maybe I hooked with these people in the, in the hood before somewhere. I was, I pulled up on them or something. And I'd be driving through the town. And you just gotta like, they really just need somebody to talk to, right? Yeah, like snap at the end of the like, day, snap out of it. yeah, because they just be so enraged. And I yeah. remember I, one of the cats, I just like snatched him up, and like at first he's trying to buck with me to like he seen me. I just like pushed him all the way over and just like told him like, yo, like what happened? Like a lot of times they just need to get stuff off their chest because they right. just be in the moment, mm -hmm. and they be in the moments so that even the cops, you know, everybody be in the moment <laughs> right. at the time, you know. But the cop got a gun, and maybe the young person got a gun, or you know, nice yeah, sticks, right. you know, know tasers, sprays, all kind yeah. of stuff. And people just don't really. They be so in the situation that, you know, we making decisions, you know, split the second decisions that last permanent. And that's what yeah. we got to really get. We got to get out of that to where we can get back, you know, like you were saying, the, the cops on the beat where they in the neighborhood so they already know. So we can actually have a conversation instead of escalating mm -hmm. um, yeah. more so quick. And my thing is, too, um, I see this often with DVD. We out here shooting a music video, you know what I'm saying? Y'all out here harassing us, pulling up on the block, telling everybody to go home. Like, we out here trying to shoot a video, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. It's bothering people sitting on the block, calling in backup and searching everybody. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's unnecessary. Yeah. Although large crowds, although you don't know what's going on, you can assess the situation, see, talk to who house you be at, who right. neighborhood is, see what's going on. You before. see that from black officers? Or like yeah. mostly the oh, oh, oh. They should just be in the video. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hang, hang around <laughs> in case something yeah. happens, but like you don't have to say anything. Right, right. Be a silent presence. Like, 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 okay. Yeah, yes, I, mean, you know, know, I don't you know, know, know what it is. Is I hate to say it, but like uh, large groups of black people scare other people. I don't mm -hmm. like. It used to happen like in college. Like we used to, you know, our we had our black community at Michigan State, right? Yeah. For some reason, the cops always be there. Show yeah. up. We just like hanging out yeah. outside. But like 
two blocks over, the white kids outside. And throwing up in the lawn and acting yeah. a fool. Setting couches on fire in the middle of the yeah. street. Ain't no, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, any 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 I large like any large group of any kind of people for me I don't know if it's just something with me but I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention you know I'm paying well, okay, attention you, for sure but you know I'm you not you've seen like, different things though yeah, yeah. That's, so, that's fact though like anytime you get a large group of anybody together mm -hmm. it's gonna be a problem but that's, I get what that's the thing about. yeah I mean like what like how Jay was saying like they have pulled like they have pulled up into the you know into the mix to see what's going on you know like if I see a large crowd of just, people just and I'm just chilling especially I'm the just chilling. boys man they, the North Bay hop off you know what I'm saying. He put up in front of me, so I was just like, I I figured it wasn't right, but I just got off the car. Saw the police. The police had walked back to their car, so I thought it was okay. So I got out of my car and I just like walked up the oldest window, you know, just to check on whatever. These boys and, and girl hopped out the car quick uh, on me, and you know, I, I was like in some, I was in some street clothes for real, um, and so it was like, and they started yelling, going crazy, and I just like was standing there. I was trying to see if like they were gonna come at me. You know, because I like, I be getting, I be feeling it like, I be ready. He was terrible at that. He was terrible at that. Like, so, you know, but they, they say nothing. I just be waiting because it'd be like, you know, they can get off, they be getting off on a lot of people where a lot of people don't be knowing, you yeah. know, what your rights are, what you can yeah. say, what you can mm -hmm. do. And, you know, like me, I'm like, I'll be waiting for somebody to try to, you know, because like we got, you know, I'm about to call, I'm about to call you. Undercover chief. boss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boss, <laughs> Let's right. see what you do in this situation. Me, as soon as you tap me, as soon as you tap me. As you're going down. Ash number two. Officers. <laughs> hey, he, hey, one second. He wants to talk to you. <laughs> Who the fuck that is? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Hello? Get, 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 get up. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. Well, he what happened was, <laughs> he was over here. Yeah. Telling you, yeah. you know. I mean, when you have that type of connection, or even just it's just knowing that yeah. that's my thing, just yeah. knowing is half the battle. Like right, if exactly. you know, then you can stand up and you can defend yourself. Yeah. But when you don't know, you can't. Exactly. So, before we get up out of here, I know you got a lot of stuff y'all got going on, y'all to promote. Let's what, what y'all got going on? Let's talk about it. Real quick, your oh. hilarious is kind of upset. <laughs> um, okay, he said, um, I think, I think we should for sure educate people on not trying to win a battle with the police and fight it in court. Mm -hmm. You can't, um, you can't argue and give them a reason to claim you're resisting arrest. Just comply and fight it in court. Then he said, keep your license and registration clipped to uh, your sun visor. That's, that's too much. What's too much? What's too much? What's too much? I like you want to be able to reach. Yeah, you want to be able to reach. I'm reach honest. for what? So I they think you got a gun? You want to be able to reach. He yeah. is. Do not listen to him. Right. I mean, we want to be able to. He is always survival. Yeah, but, yeah, survival, yeah, but, always survival, but you just, life. like, what I've learned, especially, it's all about articulation. So whatever you do, just tell them what you're doing. I'm reaching for my wild officer. I'm doing this. Because especially you got the body yeah, cam, you got stuff yeah. recording. If anything happened, hey, you good. Oh, right? or and, you did, and, you, and, you and it got covered. recorded. Yeah. I don't know about I don't that plan one. On that. Um, he, well, he said that way you're reaching up and not across. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. But then he said, but then they violate our rights, especially white cops. So how does knowing your rights help? 
don't, as soon as the police come up, I mean, you know what they're about to ask you about it already. So, I mean, I don't think you reach when you I don't get to the window. I don't think it matters at that moment, knowing your rights in that particular moment. It, it matters when you're in court. Yeah, but right. not, you just want to, it's taking, bye. yeah, exactly. Just go home, you go to court, and then do all your lawyer talk you want to do at the uh, stoplight. You don't do that at the stoplight. I think more so, okay, on the education part, not necessarily knowing your rights, but like you said, knowing what to do, right? right. Young, younger kids, like, you know, they, like, hot, hot heads. Like, that, that, that too, right? Like, you gotta, you gotta snap out of your, your ego and, like, realize, like, you, you gotta, yeah, handle this in a different kind of manner. Like, you're not talking to, like, one of your friends right. on the street. You know what I mean? Someone's right, we kill you. Or it, possibly get away with it. Mm, right. But they be talking crap. Like, it don't I, matter. And that's, see, don't that's, and that's, 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 that's the problem. Like, but they, when you're young, though, you, you've never experienced something like that. Like, who is this random white man? You know what I mean? These boys are from the city that I'm from uh, today. The I mean, great city of like, Minnesota. They're from the city of Detroit, right? Right? See, you know, if you're, if you're from the great city of Minnesota, you learn, like, you know, a lot of times, it's a certain way, you know. They be tripping in Minnesota. It's a certain way, like, you, know, like, you, know, like, you, know, like, you, you deal with the police. Like, you know, I feel like we learned that at a young age, too. Turn the jazz on. Turn the jazz on. And then, all the Turn the jazz on. Yeah, you turn on the jazz music, you roll your window down enough and then you just man hello officer how are you doing today well, you know he's talking to you start a conversation you're good to go you saying this because you're from both you you yeah, see this was me this is way before why. i just did the police yeah, stuff in 2017 but i always, always have my talk. stuff out as soon as they before they get out the car i have my stuff in hand playing yeah. no, yeah. let's yeah. talk that's yeah. what i should yeah. play yeah. 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 Like yeah. ask them about the family all kind of stuff yeah. Yeah. i was work today i mean like yeah if you if you be i'll be doing that too you gotta you gotta be courteous when that stuff happens you can't be you can't be high you can't be trying to ask too many too many questions just like simple stuff, you know, and they be like, you know what? I'm just gonna let Here you go. Like they don't even take, story don't even take yourself in. <laughs> they just hand you your stuff, and they be like, uh, um, what's, what's anything on your record? Are you a good driver? I like when they ask you, you a good driver. They don't ask about the record. Just ask, are you a good driver? You could just say, yeah. You ain't gotta talk about it, man. your record. And then you give your ID back. Man, you be getting over. Everybody doesn't no, have. No, clearly, no, everyone no, doesn't no, have no kind of experience. Actually, I don't be getting over now. Nah. Yeah, they, nah, they, they, get they, they be on some trash. Yeah, but he be. <laughs> but I have an encounter. Yeah. But like Jamion said, drop a mixtape. You heard dropping a mixtape song? I ain't gonna lie. I'm right. for real. I'm working on it. Yeah, we so serious. Like, like first one, I thought that was a joke. No. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're not rapping on her though. Oh, we should host y'all on y'all DJ Clue or Cali no, for, yeah. for the young yeah. kids. So, so we gonna have like <laughs> my idea was <laughs> my idea was just to have like a um, few artists from the Detroit just on one mix tape. We just bang it out. From Detroit, just take it off. Bro, just bang it out. Like five, seven, five, seven songs on the mix tape. Hot artists that's in the city already. I'm gonna just put a song featuring Su Su. So like you all present. Yep, hosting it. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Just producing it. Cali do it. Don't even rap. Yeah. Don't even get one. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's true. And it's just comedian Bro, stuff. I don't, know, I, don't know how, I don't know how young y'all are, but you know, if y'all know about like the West Coast All Stars or the East Coast, you know, y'all like the old songs, like we're all in the same gang, and you know, different, them different kind of songs. That's kind of like the idea, like just trying to get them to. Nah, the city sounded got death row, but I don't know yet. It doesn't sound like death row. All right, we're gonna show you coming up. Uh, well, next Saturday, shop. yeah, my sister shop at Views Bar and Grill. Yeah, you didn't talk about the business. Uh, oh. Elaborate it a little bit more. Oh, so my business, ERD Technology, um, website development and maintenance business. Um, I'm having a sipping shop for other local business to come in to um, showcase their business as a vendor in the bar. Um, I'm giving out depends on their vendor level. They get two drink tickets or one drink ticket, a meal ticket, and you know what I'm saying. So you know what I'm saying. Hook them up, network. Mm -hmm. uh, view is open now uh, from 11 a.m. to 9. No, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. now. Mm -hmm. So happy hours from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So we mm -hmm. in here on that day or period. Period for the summer. It's 11 <laughs> a.m. to 2 a.m. You see what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Spark something. <laughs> yeah. So it starts. At, it starts at 12 p.m. to 12 5. So that's a good period. Yeah. So when people come in, people get on work. Right. Well, and it's Saturday too, where they go to the oh, later right. on spot. Right. So everybody come in there, yeah. hang out, showcase, yeah. buy some home and stuff from some of my vendors. So uh what can they get you up if they want to get a vendor page or whatever? Um they can follow my business page at E R D um Tech T E C H L L C. That's my Instagram. Um email E R D Tech twenty one at Gmail. Personal page. Yeah. Say no. <laughs> is, is, there, is there a deadline? Yes, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Next 
Wednesday the 15th? Yeah, the 15th. Mm-hmm. So I need oh, all yeah. for the youth. Yeah. 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 I'm showing sure everybody come out. <laughs> 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 you know how I get down. Like, we got uh, Brandon, um, Brandon Hunt. Um, he His team is playing against my team. So it's Team Holly versus Team Hunt uh, for the youth. Adults, $10 to get in. Tri- all children are free. But it's kind of just like a uh, it's like a celebrity basketball game at Persian High School at 2 p.m. Um, so we're just going to be out there hooping. Um, I hope we hunt getting a game. We're trying to stay on the sidelines and coach. But, you know, you, you hooping? Or you gonna coach? I want, I want, I, I'm the coach, so I'm hoping the other coach get in. But he's been oh, acting real. Right. He's acting real scared, scared to get on the court. <laughs> so even like I'm just going to coach because he got some hoopers on his squad. Yeah. See you. He got some he got some hoopers on his squad, but I got some hoopers on my squad too. So okay. I'm, I, I hope I he get in there so we can play. I might hoop. Play. I might hoop. <laughs> a little cameo. No, nah, I'm kidding. I'm just going to be like, yeah, <laughs> I am not hooping. <laughs> yeah, I'm retired from everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? I'm I, don't know. I, might, I might have on a white t-shirt just in case. Tap my shoulder and go in. Oh my right. God! Right. Right. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah. 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 So might need an extra sub. I'm on both teams with it. No, I'm, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Ain't on both teams. I'm not saying that. That's what I'm saying. Like he's yeah, he's telling you out. He's, he's about to get fired. <laughs> 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 no, he gonna be waiting on y'all. I'm sorry. I'm gonna ride home. <laughs> hey, he gonna be ride home. It starts now. Right. Yeah. It starts right now. Like you should have drove today. Right. <laughs> That's good though. You guys have some great stuff coming up, and we really want to thank you for coming out and talking to us. Yeah. Fun. Open door policy. Yeah. 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 Want to. Come back. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Put it up there, put it out to your people. You know, the whole purpose of this show is to, you know, do what you everyone is doing and what I see a lot of young people doing is promoting positivity. Right. So it's the outlet for you to come and you know, talk to our crowd and you know, enhance your crowd, things of that nature. So Y'all might need to come back. Uh, <laughs> after when they get like, you know, deep in the election oh, stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Open door policy. Yeah. Oh yeah, one more thing, um shout out my girlfriend business too. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't oh, be in trouble. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, she sells detox water, um, it's called the Tasty Trouble, so she got a different flavor, different. It's water. Boy, I'm not talking about that. I first thought was like, that ain't the same thing as. Wow, <laughs> you talk. Wow. I, yeah, we being discreet. We don't know. No, she, 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 she creative. So you know what I'm saying, she <laughs> made the name of. She the business cards for y'all. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. Thank y'all, right. No, you can't get one. Like, you know, <laughs> the business cards today, she usually send the send the lunch. That's what, that's what we, be, we be trying to eat. eat that. Right. Um, Shout out Tasty uh, Trouble. So, we'll try it. Yeah, she's also one of the vendors too on um, next Saturday. Okay, so nice. She would have a few samples off for people to taste which ones they want to do, and she's creating a hangover drink now. So yes. That hangover hit different when you get well. Uh, when you what? I'm not 22, I'm not so <laughs> the hangover hit way different. First of all, it don't it don't matter. Once you hit 25, sorry, <laughs> hangover hit different. Uh, yeah, at right. least two days. <laughs> nah, no, whatever. Yeah. Good. Y'all have to leave y'all handles. Y'all want people to follow y'all, you know. You did that. It's Ju- Joelle Jones, M I J U W E L L J O N E S M I on Instagram. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah, talk about the Holla Brand real quick. Holla Brand, uh, we just, you know, Dave, S Boy, uh, over at Enjoy. Yeah, shout Detroit. out to Dave, man. Yeah, my man. Uh, he's a brand developer, too. So I was just talking. I use the Holla hashtag on like every single post that I make. Mm-hmm. And so he's just like, man, you should be turning into a brand. Oh, so, that's. And so uh, we just started an apparel apparel company. Um, had a soft launch in October. Had another soft launch at a Black Market Saturday that uh, Enjoy Your Trade does um, earlier this year. And we're actually getting ready for another Black Market Saturday on the 27th this month. It should be at Durfee Innovation Center. Um, so definitely if any local uh, business want to get involved, reach out to Enjoy Detroit. Enjoy Detroit on Instagram. Um, they should be able to take care of you. But Bro, this is like we just need to start, you know, monetizing off of this. Yeah. It's like, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, same thing. Nice. How has it been working after the two soft launches? 
Oh, it's been it's been real good. I just keep going. I just I just like doing launches just whenever. You know, you know just, the la- the launches just be like pop ups really. Right. I just call it a launch because it just be like you know met a new crowd of people. So now right. I'm just relaunching yeah. the brand. Yeah. Um, and so, but I just been doing soft launches because we're working on it. Um, Got to get the website um, looking how we want it to look exactly. Then I'm probably just do like the major major. Because you procrastinate on the website. I mean, <laughs> right, you know, right. You know, right. You know, right. You know, right. I was waiting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's, diff, it's difficult keeping up with like some of the orders without having a website because it's so much yeah. back and forth, like working with the team. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, yeah. people want to do and special all orders. Yeah, all kind of special orders. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, working to go ahead and get this website together. I'm and, not going to do it. Right. <laughs> <Some> <laughs> scary doors. <laughs> As soon as we get that oh, website up and running, we're going to be sending people the link and we'll be good to go. Cool. All right. Yeah. I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, you, you are? Yeah. That's going to be for you. Uh, that's our time. Please vote. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying this for like a whole year. Just You're going to hear it from me often. Like, it matters what he thinks are or not. And um, I just want to say, be inspired. You know, doing this show, I've definitely been inspired by our guests and everything that everyone is doing and most of you all have been younger than me so just be inspired with what no, you're, that's real. no yeah. that's real talk like just watching you guys and our other guests and everything like that I hope everyone else watching can see this and be inspired to do more or do something that they've always wanted to do because all it takes is for you to open your mouth like we were saying mm-hmm. so be inspired by everything you see everything around you and that's all <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we go, I want to give a shout out to uh, my fraternity. They're down in uh, Vegas right now for our uh, conclave. So mm-hmm. they're down there turning up. I'm sad I'm not there. And today actually is my 12th anniversary of singing. Yeah. 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 Shout, yeah, shout out to my sins. Uh, nice tie, see, see my, well, You know, I had to. <laughs> you know, I had to. Oh. Oh. Let's, see, let's see if I can go down the line. We got Drake Scott. Okay. We got uh, so John, the name John King, got 100,000. <laughs> Seriously. We got Chelsea the Young Punk. We got I Odelio Jashina. Who? Yeah. We got That's Ch- why you was trying to wrap this show up so you can go out and We got We got Chuck 6 AM, my man Smooth Team, and Freaky Ziggy. Man, what? what? <laughs> okay. Yeah, and we are the Blue Outlaws, so uh, only us are loyal. So shout out to them. Mm-hmm. Turn up, uh, tip one back for me. And, uh, your man Jay Liggs, this has been the Coach of Cure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> this is your coach for being a part of it. Peace. Bye. Bye. Bye.